Well, a very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be listening to this presentation or watching it. A very, very warm welcome. Maybe, once in a lifetime, an opportunity comes along which really ticks all the boxes. One which radically improves the lives of the less fortunate. Check. One which reduces unemployment. Check. One which creates substantial returns for investors. Check. One which creates significant profits for the company. Check. One which is endorsed by Western governments. Check. And one which carries virtually zero risk. Check. Introducing Cocoon Specialist Disability Accommodation or SDA Care. A genuine opportunity of a lifetime. Throughout this presentation, you will see the letters NDIS, which stands for the National Disability Insurance Scheme and is the very bedrock of everything that we at Cocoon do. The Australian Government has an excellent welfare programme and there are a number of health related departments that they are involved in. Of course, the Australian Government Department of Health is the first one which owns and manages the hospitals. Medicare, which is a, an insurance scheme which people pay into so that they can access medical support and medical care when they need it. And the final plank, as mentioned, is the NDIS or National Disability Insurance Scheme. The National Disability Insurance Scheme is a program by the Australian Federal Government and its aim is to provide support to people with a disability, their families and their carers. It was introduced across Australia from July 2017 and is jointly governed and funded by the federal and participating states and territory governments. Prior to 2017, the NDIS or Disabled Support was managed and governed by each individual state across Australia with different criteria and different levels of allowance. Now, around 5 million Australians have some sort of mental or physical disability. By that I mean anything from a missing finger or a missing eye or permanent backache or perhaps even a leg amputated below, below the knee due to maybe diabetes or something like that. But of those 5 million, around 500,000 or half a million are permanently and significantly disabled. Now, the federal budget for the NDIS, which is second only to the pensions, for the financial year 2022, sorry, 21 to 22 was 23.2 billion. For this year, it's 28.3 billion and indeed has already exceeded that. For next year, the forecast is 29.4 billion. And in 2024 to 25, the forecast is 31.9 billion Australian dollars. Now you can see a chart here which shows the breakdown of the disabled population of Australia and the allowances that they are eligible to receive. We have around about four and a half million, as I mentioned, who have some kind of mental or physical disability and they will attract annual allowances of between 10,000 to around about 400,000 Australian dollars and that's the total care package for them. And of course that depends on the severity of their disability. At the top end of the scale, we have what we call robust, and this is the half a million people I just mentioned. Now they can receive anything from 750,000 Australian dollars to over 900,000 or even more per person. And these are people with very high levels of dependency and need. So people that require 24 hour care, people that require significant numbers of people to maybe lift them, to bathe them, and so on and so forth. Now, as you can imagine, becoming a registered provider for any government agency is extremely tough and the companies have to be squeaky clean and jump through a lot of hoops to become registered, a registered provider. And Cocoon, in fact, is the largest now registered uh, NDIS provider in Australia. And here we have the letter from the Australian government approving Cocoon SDA as a registered NDIS provider. So let me tell you a little bit about Cocoon SDA Care and some of their history. Well, they started operating their home doctor services and their telehealth services in 2008. In 2019, they started construction of 62 NDIS compliant homes in Adelaide and South Australia. 
The following year, they completed 300 new homes and there are now more than a thousand in progress across the seven states of Australia. Early last year, in 2022, they started their allied health services to provide services to Cocoon's participants. They'd always been able to provide these services by subcontracting them out, but now a full range of doctors, nurses and therapists are employed directly by Cocoon to provide these services to the participants in their homes. In 2022, they started construction for what we call a, commun a Cocoon hub or a village, one in Melbourne and one in Brisbane. And these are small townships designed and built exclusively for people with high dependency needs, libraries, cafes, community centres, schools and so on. And we now operate throughout Australia in all seven states across Australia. And as I said earlier, we are the largest NDIS provider in the country. And here's a map just showing the seven states in Australia and where we are building our homes currently. Well, what do these homes look like, I hear you ask? Well, let me take you through a selection of pictures and photographs showing both the external and internal of some of our homes. Here we have one in Victoria and you can see the width of the doors there. And here is a home in Midvale in Perth, the outside of the property there. You can see the spacious lounge here where you can get a wheelchair around every piece of furniture and every obstacle. The bedrooms again exactly the same and all the ceilings have hoists attached to them. And here the, you can see the width of the corridor, so easily accessible to everybody. And the same home, the toilets, you're in fact able to do a U-turn in a wheelchair in all of the bathrooms. And all of the doors and windows are smart operated, as we'll see in a minute. This is a carer's room, so the carer will be here 24 hours and during the day when not sleeping it's used as an office. And finally another photograph of the, of the living area. Again you can see how spacious it is and how easy it is to get around in a wheelchair. So this is a home in Brisbane and again you may be able to see one of these worktops here, some of which are adjustable and they go up and down according to the needs of the patient. And every single aspect of the home, the blinds, the windows, the air conditioning, the lighting, the doors and everything is controlled by a smart home panel, either by touch or by voice. Every single home is built with the latest smart home technology in place. What do they say about Cocoon? And when I talk about they, I'm talking about esteemed, well-respected Australian politicians. You know, in the West, it's very unusual for any politician to stand up and publicly endorse a private company unless they are 100% certain that that company is squeaky clean and delivers and does exactly what it says it will do and deliver. So just sit back and listen to a few of the comments and a few of the things that people have said about Cocoon. Welcome. My name is Christy Dawes. I am a very proud Cocoon ambassador and I am also your MC for this evening. So lucky you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute honour for me to stand before you tonight as the Northern Territory Minister for Disabilities. So I want to start my contribution this evening by saying thank you to Cocoon and thank you to every other uh, disability service provider. Housing designed for a person with extreme functional needs is essential to improve their quality of life and provide the specific supports they require. The work Cocoon is doing will ultimately benefit and improve overall outcomes for many people living with disability. I went to visit one of Cocoon's SDA homes in Berrima a few weeks ago and I do want to let everybody know it is my, in, in my awesome electorate of Kurama and I was very impressed with the building itself as I told Zafar and his team. It was ultra modern with very wide doors and hallways, it had an adjustable kitchen bench, a sensory room and boy was that house high, very high, it was awesome. It was also great to meet the local builder, Paul Winters there, and to hear how Cocoon's investment has had a positive impact on the construction industry here in Darwin, creating many jobs for the building sector. Now, I met the Cocoon team maybe three months ago as part of my main role uh, in the Chief Minister's office where my job is to support business. Now, every subsequent meeting I have with these guys, I could not believe the rate at which their projects were progressing. To say they hit the ground running would be an understatement. But what I mostly took away from these meetings was the passion these people had for improving people's lives, 
Their mantra of their participants thriving, not just existing, seems to be firmly built into this company's foundation. My inspiration to support Zaffer in his aim came when he told me that there are so many young people, people under 40, who have limited options when they are disabled. They're living in aged care homes, they're living in nursing homes, they're living in hospitals. And our shared passion was to do something about that. Our passion was to make their lives better. And I believe that we're doing that. So it's been with pride that I've watched the progress of Cocoon as they've built several houses. And they've done it in a different manner to lots of other providers. These houses are settled all around the community so that people can live close to their relatives, close to their families, close to the things that they hold near and dear to them. Good morning, everybody. My name is Katrine Hilliard, and I have the absolute privilege of being the Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Thank you very much to the Cocoon Group for all that you are investing in South Australia. Thank you for empowering people with disability to live a full and active life, to be able to equally and actively participate in every aspect of community life and in our economy in a comfortable home. Thank you. Enjoy your discussions today together. Well, you've already got a little bit of a hint, but let's ask, why should you partner with Cocoon? And more specifically, why should you partner with us in a Cocoon SDA business package? Well, for a start, Cocoon income is from one client only, the NDIS via the Australian Federal Government. That means the revenue is guaranteed and there are, of course, no bad debts. Cocoon has a significant track record of delivering extremely high annual returns for its partners. We have over 20 years experience in the medical industry. We're the largest NDIS provider in Australia and the program can be used as a vehicle to obtain Australian residency through the Cocoon Business Opportunity Program. So now we've had the chance to drill down into detail as to what the NDIS is and to learn a little bit about Cocoon as a business and as a company. So now the part I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Let's take a really detailed look at the Cocoon business packages available to partners. Now put simply, the purpose of your investment is to help Cocoon acquire land, build NDIS SDA housing and set up and manage the NDIS business therein. You are effectively buying a 40% share in a new business providing care and support to disabled citizens and or a 40% or 100% share in the land and property depending which package you go for. Now in return, Cocoon will share the business profits with you in accordance with the agreed profit sharing ratio. Now there are four key business packages offered by Cocoon. The first one is primarily for Australians and that's called Owner Care Package 1. And this is for Australians who already own a piece of land, haven't decided what to do with it, and are able to build a house to the specifics provided by Cocoon and then lease it back to them for running an NDIS care home. The second one is called Owner Care Package 2, and this is 995,000. And again, this allows you to put in your contribution and for Cocoon to buy the land and build the house on your behalf, which you then lease back. The next one is called Landlord Care, and this is where you own 40% of the land property and 40% of the business that is running within the home. And finally, at the entry level, we have something called business care, which is 550,000 Australian dollars. And for that, you own 40% of the business. Now let's look at each of these apart from the first one in some detail. So here we have only care package two, and the cost of this is 995,000. Cocoon will buy the land, and transfer the title to you and then build the house and again when the house is built transfer the title of the house to you now because they're transferring it this means if you're a foreigner there is no foreign stamp duty levy of an additional eight percent which is usually levied to foreigners buying land and property in australia so you will own the land and property hundred percent cocoon will own the business running within that home hundred percent and of course the goodwill should that business ever be sold as a going concern the minimum contractually obligated annual profit is 250,000. We can't use the word 
guaranteed because we're not a bank and only banks are allowed to use that word in Australia. But it's a contractual obligation that the minimum net profit of the home will be 250000 Australian dollars. You would then lease the property back to Cocoon for a period of 20 years plus 10. And you then have a choice of taking a fixed income of 15% of your contribution, rate rising by 3% every three years, or 40% of the variable profits. These payments are in fact in lieu of any rental that Cocoon would pay to you. You share in the business profit instead of charging a uh, rental. And of course the business profits will be significantly higher, substantially higher than any rental you may be able to attract. Well, now we move on to the next package, which is called Landlord Care. And the entry cost for this is 695,000 Australian dollars. And for this, uh, you will own 40% of the land and property and 40% of the business, which means, of course, that you also benefit from 40% of any goodwill that is added onto the value of the business if it ends up being sold at any point. Similar to Owner Care 2, there is a contractually obligated $250,000 a year minimum net profit. And of course, there's no lease back because the property is jointly owned. Similar to Owner Care 2, you then have the option of taking 15% of your contribution per year with a 3% increase every three years or 40% of the profits, which could be variable. And the final package is called Business Care. The cost of this is 550,000 Australian dollars and there is no property component involved in this particular package. However, you do still own 40% of the business that will be run within the home, which includes 40% of any goodwill on the value of the business should it ever be sold. Again, as with the other two packages, the minimum contractually obligated annual profit is $250,000. Again, there's no lease back. And again, you have the option of 15% per year fixed income of your contribution, rising by 3% every three years, or 40% of the variable profits. Now that was the three main packages, but we also have a current promotional offer, uh, which is trialing our new hands-off franchise model. Now this means that you can take any of the packages that I just described, and in addition to all the benefits there, it can come with a job within the home itself. And this is primarily for people that would like to be able to avail themselves of moving out to Australia at the earliest opportunity. We currently have 50 ring fenced and pre-approved work permits uh, for this scheme. And you can use them, as I say, in any of the packages. This particular one is based on business care and averages out at 29% profit, I should say contractually obligated rather than guaranteed, of which 15% is your profit of $82,500 plus a job with a salary of $80,000 plus all entitlements, which actually brings it up to about the equivalent value of 97,000. So this all together comes out at a 29% profit. Now that can also be used for the landlord care package or the owner care two package. But of course, because the salary is fixed, uh, the profits will be lower in terms of percentages overall. So about 26% for landlord care and about 23% for only care too, but still a significant uh, return on investment and of course giving you the ability to move to Australia just as soon as the business starts to commence. But of course, as I say, there are only a few of these available, so there is significant limited availability on this. So if it's something that you're interested in, you will really need to act fast on this particular opportunity. So here are just a few slides uh, setting out the kinds of returns that are available for the various packages. As I say, $250,000 a year minimum net profit is contractually obligated, but in reality and based on track record, the average is actually closer to $400,000 or, or even above. So within even a 20 year period on owner care package, taking into account uh, capital gain, you're looking at a 364% return on investment. Here we have what landlord and business care, and again, the minimum profit 250,000, but the achievable one closer to 400 or even more, uh, which will give you a return of around about 27 or 29% uh, ret annual return. And uh, the goodwill would be three and a half times the annual profit. So that would be an additional amount that would go on top of your initial contribution. So a significant return there. So why is the profit so high? Well, here's an example of an actual MDIS allowance for a participant with high dependency needs. And this is for six months only. 
Okay, and it's normally over well over 800,000 the kinds of participants that that we attract. Now you can see from with, even without a calculator that the plan shown is for six months and comes out at 416,120. Seven and ninety-nine cents uh, for six months, times two. Of course, that is eight hundred thirty-two thousand two hundred and fifty-six per year. So a significant allowance for people with high dependency needs. And of course, the actual figure can very much depend on each participant. It could be as low as seven hundred fifty thousand. It could be as high as one point eight, one point nine million. So again, why is the profit so high? Well. You, if you, when you do your due diligence, you will find that virtually every developer in Australia is jumping on the SDA, Specialist Disability Accommodation, bandwagon. They're all trying to build houses which are NDIs compliant. But of course, firstly, not every participant has a rental allowance for the homes. And secondly, once you've got that house, you have to fill it and provide the care services. So you will have to rent it out to a care company who will subcontract out the other various care, medical equipment and other support services and so on. And every step of the way, each of those is making their own uh, margin because of additional costs. But of course, with Cocoon, we provide everything, accommodation, care, medical equipment, therapies and so on, providing everything within one group. That increases overall efficiencies and of course, that increases margins. Hence, our potential annual returns of 40% or more. Now here are some examples of some actual profit loss accounts for three months. These are the three months ending uh, December 2022. Now you can see that the annual net profit on this particular one, uh, sorry, the three monthly profit on this particular one was $150,816. If we multiply that by four, we would get a total of 603,264. Now, of course, there will be slight variation in this. There will be slightly different ones at each quarter, but not a huge difference. So your annual return at 40% of that profit would be around about 241,306 or in percentage terms on a business care package 43.87%, on a landlord care 34.72% and on owner care 2 24.25%. Plus of course landlord care owners would benefit from 40% of any capital gain on the property and owner care 2 owners would benefit from 100% of that capital gain. But as I say, the NDIS participants allowances do vary. So this is just a guideline, although this is actually an actual uh, P&L for the three months ending 31st December 2022. And here's another one. Uh, this one is in uh, New South Wales, and this has two residents again, same as the last one. Uh, but this time each has a total annual NDIS allowance of just under $900,000 each. And again, you can see if you look at the business profit of 195,988 per quarter or the for the last three months, multiply that by four, that would give you a, a profit of 783,952. And again, your annual return at 40% of that profit would be 313,581. Or again, in percentage terms, business care 57.01%, landlord care 45.12%, and owner care to 31.52%. But again, as I say, uh, you would still benefit from any capital gain if you had a landlord care or an owner care to package. So, and again, I must stress that the figures for each home will vary depending on each participant's NDIS disability benefits. But these are homes with just two participants in each one. So significant profits, significant returns. Well, a question we frequently get asked is, if this is so profitable, why does Cocoon need partners? Well, as I mentioned, the company has been involved in the medical sector for many, many years. But when it first started building houses, it had no track record as a developer, so funding wasn't available. So quite simply, they talked to local friends and, and investors and said, hey, would you like to come in with us? And they did. And it works. Um, all the systems have been developed using this partnership model. So why change it? One of the senior members of the staff is actually Malaysian and a few years ago asked the management would they be able to offer this to his friends and relatives in Malaysia. They said why not and therefore we have launched in Malaysia and launching in several other countries very very soon. Another unforeseen benefit uh, was that the Australian investors who visited their homes as we will encourage you to do uh, once you become a partner if they see anything that's slightly off or that something they don't understand or something they're not 100% happy with, uh, they 
represent an extra pair of ears and eyes and can make head office aware of anything they've seen which perhaps could do with improvement. And finally, with an IPO coming up in December, uh, it's important that the company has investors and operations, but particularly investors internationally, or else they'd only be able to list on their own local Australian stock exchange. So with international investors, that enables us to launch in New York, in Dubai, uh, and Hong Kong, and in London. So what's the process? You've seen everything about the business packages, you've seen about the NDIS, and you've seen about the company and the great strides it's making. You'd like to join us. So what happens next? Well, it's very simple. All you need to do is to decide whether you'd like to go for the 15% or the 40% variable or the trial franchise model, and of course decide which package you'd like, whether it's landlord care, business care, or owner care too. We will then prepare the joint venture agreement for you, and upon signing that, we just ask that you pay 10% on signing it, and to let us know when you're going to be paying the balance. Now, frankly, most people actually pay the entire balance on signing the JV, because of course, the sooner we get going, the sooner the business can be up and running, and the sooner you can be generating significant returns. So once payment is made in full, we can decide on the, well, you can decide on the name of the JV company, uh, set up the bank account, uh, and uh, the allocation of the business address. Sometimes that will be the registered office, which can be a, a company secretary, or it may need to be the actual address of the house that you're investing in. That depends on each state. Then the land is bought and the house is built, and that will normally take uh, four to six months, depending on which state. And once the building is completed, business operations will commence, and then payment will be made to you every six months. And it couldn't be simpler. Well, of course, managing risk is an integral part of this opportunity. It's not a small amount of money you'll be putting in, so it's very important that every step of the way, risk is managed in a very, very specific way. So, first of all, the capital contributions are paid directly into Cocoon's legal trust fund, or escrow, as we call it in other countries. Now, the capital contribution can only be taken out from the trust fund as stipulated in the JV for the purposes of basically setting up the bank account, buying the land, building the property, and setting up the business. Now, the JV property is allocated, and then investors can inspect the site to verify the stages of construction pretty much any time you want. And of course, you can visit other JV houses by appointment. After that, half-yearly financial results are prepared by a third-party independent accountant. So, the clauses protecting your capital contribution. Now, you will have 24-hour unrestricted viewing access to the bank account, where the capital contribution will be paid into, and debited from payments to be made in accordance with the JV agreement. So, any time of the day, you can just open your computer, log onto the bank account, see what's going on. Now, it must be applied to the construction of the property uh, from which the business will operate from and other expenses required for the operation of the business. Now, if you see a payment going out that you're not sure what it is or it concerns you, you have the right to request that uh, head office provide you with receipts for that transaction and the reasons for it. It is your absolute right. You are a 40% shareholder after all. Now, when can you exit from the JV, whether you want to because of cash flow issues or whether you suddenly decide that you'd like to sell up? Um, you can do it at any time, basically within 12 months from commencement of the operation. Clearly, you can't exit before the business has commenced because there's, there's nothing to come back. But within 12 months of the business commencing, which will be from about month seven, Cocoon guarantees full repayment of the capital contribution. Now, it's after 12 months from commencement, you can engage a business valuer who will determine the market value of the business, which includes goodwill, which generally starts at three and a half times of the annual profit. And the first right of refusal uh, to, for that business will, of course, go to Cocoon. Now, tax implications, uh, quite important. Half yearly financial results are, are issued and you are advised of the amount due to you based on the agreed profit share uh, that's in the JV. You then must issue a tax invoice to Cocoon without GST for the amount due. If you don't issue a tax invoice and you simply say, please pay it into my bank account, they are legally obliged to withhold 10% withholding tax. But if you send them a tax invoice for the amount advised, that will be paid without withholding tax into any bank account that you nominate. 
And there, of course, if, if tax is due in the country in which you happen to reside, that is none of our business, um, and that is between you and your local tax authority. So, how do we ensure that everything is kept above board? Well, the Honourable Gary Hargrove is an Australian MP and he is Advisory Board Chairman. And his role is to advise us on corporate governance, on legislation, on changes to legislation, any changes to rules and payments and all these kinds of things. And that is his primary role, to be the eyes and ears and liaise between us and the government. Now, Mohamed Latif is a, the money man and he's our CEO, highly experienced in financial and accounting. And our executive chairman is Zafar Khan, who has years and years of experience of setting up successful businesses and has written many, many books on personal development. We also have Nicholas Pollins, who's our uh, financial controller and ensures that everything is squeaky clean. And Hayley Wallace, who is our operations director. And of course, we conduct audits on the homes every single week and the government has to conduct audits on our homes every three years as a minimum. So how do we get paid? We've talked about how you send your contribution over to us, but how will you get paid? Where does the income come from? Well, Cocoon will submit regular claims to the NDIS based on the participant's allowance and stay, um, either through the portal or the plan payment. And Cocoon will advise, inform NDIS to forward the payment directly to the bank account of your particular JV company for the relevant amount. And this happens several times a week. The JV company's account, as I mentioned, is owned jointly by yourselves and Cocoon. People do ask, how long is this going to last? Well, it's gazetted under an Act of Parliament. so. It's lasting, it's going to last. Um, any repeal would be unthinkable and political suicide. They haven't repealed Medicare, they haven't repealed the, uh, the health puzzle policies. It's here and it's here to stay. Um, it's the same, as I say, of public health and Medicare. And those have both been running for decades. And this is Australia's uh, latest Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, who is talking about securing and in fact growing the NDIS scheme and program. As I mentioned earlier, the NDIS is now the second largest federal budget after pensions, bigger even than defence. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Australian Residency Program is available through this business opportunity scheme. Here are the details here, but of course, to dig down even further, we do advise that you seek the advice of a professional and licensed Australian immigration professional. So you need to have uh, net assets of $1.2 million and you need to have had those for at least two years. If you have a business, which should be in Australia, it needs to have a turnover of $750,000 or more uh, and you have to employ more than two people. Both of those criteria will be easily met by your cocoon investment. The amount of investment minimum you must have in Australia is half a million dollars or 500,000 and that will entitle you to a five-year provisional visa. As I mentioned, there is a, there are a few other criteria you need to be 55 or under except in two states where you can be older but of course with the next program the franchise model uh, it doesn't really matter what age you are as long as you can read and write english fluently as long as you have a driving license and as long as you have a good heart to be able to deal with and and be around seriously disabled people that's very very important but as i did mention earlier this has a distinct limited availability but it is available for those of you that would like to use this as a vehicle to quickly emigrate to Australia. If you don't mind waiting two or three years, then it's fine. Any of the programs will do. But uh, if you want to get there quickly, this is the one for you. So very big thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please do ask the person showing you this or ask you to come to this presentation. Or give me a call if you just happen to fall upon this presentation with any of your questions. Call or WhatsApp me on zero on plus six zero one six six four two seven three six eight. Thank you again for watching and listening and I look forward to meeting to you soon.